Okay, so now what we need to do is actually update our quantities by what we started to do in the last one, where we have QTY here, and we can actually add in quantities. Um, well, at least the view can take in quantities, but we actually haven't set up our URL to do so. So what we need to do is find our URL here, and we're gonna have to add in a new argument, or keyword argument in this case, uh, for this URL. So what we're gonna do is question mark P, and then QTY is what we called it, and then slash D plus, all right, just like that, and then I'll, I'll have a trailing slash as well. All right, so slash D plus means only digits, and QTY is gonna be the name of the argument, like what we have here. Um, all right, so now that we have this, we can save it and we'll do a refresh inside of our cart and we see that there's no reverse for this tried one pattern, blah, blah, blah. Um, this is gonna have to do with when we did our URL call. So whenever we run in a template, uh, whenever we run URL something like that, uh, we have to make sure that we have all the arguments correct and in our cart item set, we have our arguments right here. Right, so the this is actually update card. This is for remove. Um, so we want to put zero in there, right? So f to re actually remove it from the cart, we would use zero, and then our view would actually update it with zero. All right. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and look at our view and save it. Do a refresh in here. Cool. That looks good. Uh, let's check our product. Uh oh, we have an error with our product. Another error with our product, and that has to do with this as well. Um, so let's go ahead and open up single product, and we're gonna have to figure out how to pass in some number here. So for now, I'll just put 10. Click on our product, now it comes back up. All right, so now we have a product slug, and then we have some number here, and this is gonna actually be able to pass in. So if I hit enter, it changes it to 10, and if I did the URL itself, so product one slash some number, so some long number, it, it updates the product and then it also gives us that price. Look at that, $370,000, that's pretty cool. If I hit remove, it goes to zero, zeros it out, and that's perfect, that's what we wanna see. It didn't delete it though, so that might be a problem. We might actually have to see how to actually delete it, why it's not deleting. So um, let's go ahead and print. Let's print out the QTY. So print QTY. I think I know actually. So let's change that and print it down here. Print QTY and then print int of QTY. Refresh, hit remove. It's zero, zero. So maybe if we did int of qty is equal to that we might see it actually deleted and we did so all i did was is i made sure that it's an integer and it was equal to an integer and by doing that it allowed me to delete it all right so let's delete that cool so now if we look into our single page here uh, well this is only okay i don't know if i actually want to do it to where on the view we want to pass in the quantity as part of the request. Possibly we would want to do it a different way. So I'm going to show you how to do that different way. And this different way is going to be good for us when we actually want to use um, our, we're all also going to want to use different um, attributes that we might want to attach to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my URL, get rid of this too. All right, and then in the view, I'm gonna get rid of this argument. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go try QTY equals to request.get, sorry, get.get .get QTY, except QTY equals to one. QTY or QTY a equals to one and or let's actually make it empty and QTY is false or update QTY is false and this would be update QTY being true 
Okay, so now we can code down here and say if integer of quantity is zero and update QTY, else if update QTY, else pass. So I'll explain this shortly after we test this out. So QTY is the git call we're gonna do. So in our cart, when we actually update a product, so now with product one, I would do question mark QTY equals to some number, so 120, and there we go. So now it's checking that number. So product two or two question mark QTY equals to one 200 or 20, whatever. And now it actually updates based off of that. All right, so all we're doing here is checking whether or not um, or updating the quantities based off of a git. So adding an attribute in here uh, that allows us to do that. So let's go ahead and add that to the end of our single call for this product. So I'm gonna say question mark QTY equals to 12. All right, so let's go back into our product. Add to cart 12. And if I hit remove, ah, I don't have anything there. So let's go back into our view for it and do question mark QTY equals to zero. Remove, remove, and now it removes it. Cool. So in our view, we had that error saying it cannot be zero. So let's actually see uh, what that error was by adding a product back in there. Hit remove int must be a string or a number, not none type. All right, so that, that right here can't be none. So uh, what we'll have to do is, in our view, this isn't probably the best way to run update quantity. So what we'll do then is instead, we'll just do if update quantity, and QTY. So if update quantity and QTY, so it's not, in, it we'll just say none here. So if update quantity and quantity, right? If it's that, if int of QTY equals to zero, then that, then we can do else. We update it to that. Oops, there we go. All right, so now that should work a little bit better. So if I do a refresh, it's not actually doing anything there. Cool. Um, and back into our view. Change this to QTY equals to zero to remove it. Click on remove, goes away. Go to product, add a cart, goes to 12. Cool. All right, so now what we need to do is actually add in um, a name or an element that would actually add QTY to, or us, our ability to actually make a form. Now we're gonna make a form that adds QTY in here into our actual uh, call for what we're doing here. All right, so what we'll do is we'll do form method equals to get and action equals to the action is going to go there. It's going right to this. So now we'll do uh, input name equals to QTY. Type equal type equals the number. Input type or input type equals to submit to submit the form. And then we will say um, value equals to add to cart. And we, we, I'm just gonna leave this add to cart here for now. And then we'll add class poll, right? I'm not sure if this is gonna look great, but we'll see here in just a second. 
So going into a product, now we have this, uh, yeah, that does not look very good at all. If I hit add to cart, uh, it does one, right? So what I did here was if I go up to 10 and hit add to cart, it changes it to 10. So that form actually doesn't look that great. So form class equals to form and then update, let's do input. Actually, I wanna take this form completely out of that H1 tag and just put it underneath it. And let's look back at that form. All right, that looks a little bit better. Something we can work with a little bit more. We'll still have to fix it, but it at least looks better. So now I can actually do that. And if I refresh in here, uh, it starts out there. So maybe we wanna put um, place holder equals to one. Right, so we could even do value equals to one instead. Get rid of this. All right, so value, it's gonna start out at one. All right, so there we go. Now we can actually add in products, make changes to them, do all that. And if we did zero, it's gonna remove it. So that would actually remove it. Uh, what if we did negative? Uh-oh, can't be negative. So we have to actually put it from negative. Uh, we'll fix that later. Uh, but for now, we have we can add it, we can subtract it, we can do all types of things here. Add to cart, awesome. Okay, so that is updating the cart. And notice that I used with the form class, if I do a method of git, it will, it will still go there and it'll push all this information there uh, without really posting any information. Because if we post it, if I did a method of post, it's gonna say the uh, verification failed because we're not really posting it. Uh, we're doing a get, so it's this get is the same thing as actually going to a link. That's how you get, that's getting the link. Um, by adding this as a get, then it allows us to update our methods a little bit easier. Now there's one more thing that I could actually add into this form, and that would be some attribute. So I'm just gonna say AAR attribute like that and I'll type, I'll just say, um, uh, let's say text and the value, we'll just leave it empty. We'll say placeholder equals to like color. Let's just say that you're gonna pick a color and you're actually gonna type in that color. So now we refresh in here. We see now that I have this color, if I say red and hit add to cart, well, nothing shows up here. But in my view, I can do this exact same thing here instead of update or update quantity, uh, we're gonna do, we'll just do try attribute equals to request.get.get .get .get attribute, except attribute equals to nothing or none. We'll just say none, not an empty string. And then we can just print the attribute Okay, so let's go back into our product. Red as our color, and I want seven of them. Hit add to cart, I got seven here. If I go into my terminal, it prints out red. So that would actually allow me to do our my attributes for any given product, right? Uh, we, might, we might want it to be a little bit smarter than this, of course, we'd want maybe suggestions or, or things that I can actually select from. Uh, but what we just did was allow us to actually make little changes on the fly. Now, there are other ways to do this, like you could make a full form and have it post a form and do all this stuff that way. Uh, but this way, it's just a little bit easier and then we can have all these different attributes depending on whatever product it is. Because uh, if the product doesn't have an attribute, then we wouldn't want to actually update it with an attribute, right? Uh, but product, or we don't want to have quantities or something like that. There might be a lot of options that we don't necessarily want to have on any given product um, and this would be a way to do that. All right, so um, that's a lot. Uh, hopefully that this is all starting to click so you can see how this stuff's interacting together, how you can update quantities, how you can change attributes, and then this value right here would allow us to change um, whatever's in that cart item um, or specifically like a color that's related to a product or we could just have it in our kite cart item if we just added notes here just a little section for notes and then we just added attributes in there as notes uh, and then that should bring up another point is you can actually do this exact same thing and add notes on it 
um, as an input for the single right here. All right, so again, if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next one.